Hey guys, it's Doesn't Matter and I'm the Dream. And this is episode 25 of our podcast, Confessions of a Stand Mixer edition. And today's episode is going to be a ranking of all of Little Mix's singles. You know, hopefully we got all of them. Uh, we left out some that like were up for debate on whether or not you'd want to count them, but we chose not to. And uh, mm-hmm. that was our prerogative. So we are going to be doing two different versions of the ranking. And so the first one is going to be like our personal preference of like us ranking the singles the way we've ranked like the albums and stuff. The second ranking list we've made is how like strong or smart of a single choice we think it was. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have those two versions that we're going to go through with you guys. I think first up, we sh- we're going to do the personal preference one. Yeah. I uh, just let you guys know we have 26 in total. My number 26 is one I've been missing. Mine is Black Magic. We're not going to go into like the super specifics or super in-depth thoughts on the songs because we've already talked about all of these in the in the in the album rankings. So if you want our opinions on the songs, go check those out. Um, you know, we do long rankings on it. We really get into it. Um, and so we're just not going to repeat ourselves on here. Uh, so we're going to be kind of flying by these probably. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so just to, to, on that note, just kind of a quick reasoning. Um, I personally just don't like Christmas music. So automatically at the bottom for me. Um, I don't really like Black Magic. Never listen to it. So yeah, bottom. All right. Number 25. I have Black Magic. I have Love Me Like You. Yeah, like you said, don't like Black Magic, never liked Black Magic, don't listen to Black Magic. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That's it. Yeah, Love Me Like You. It's similar to Black Magic where I don't listen to it or like it, but I would probably listen to it over Black Magic. Mm. Maybe. (laughs) Depends on the day. I don't know. Those two I, I could not figure out for the life of me. The rankings are subject to change based on uh, mood. Um, no, yeah, literally. <laughs> number 24, I have Breakup Song. I have Holiday. Breakup Song is Black Magic meets Shout Out to My Ex for me. Um, uh, yeah, I just don't really like Breakup Song. Um, I, I just don't like Breakup Song. Uh <laughs> kind of find it a discount off of both songs neither of those songs I particularly love to begin with and I don't really like the lyrics of breakup song I find them to be very generic and repetitive um with holiday I liked it when it first came out but I for some reason just don't like it now I think I just overstreamed it um and so I really just I don't listen to it because I just I oh I listen to it too much and I don't like it as much as the other ones all right, number 23, I have Bounce Back. I have Little Me. I just don't like, I'm not really a, f- a fan of like the style of the music. Um, and I'm not really a fan of the sample and not really a fan of like the backstory to the song. I'm just not a fan. Uh, little Me. I mean, I don't know. I've. I've had mixed feelings about this song for a while, if you listen to the other rankings. Um, i just not really a fan of it. I really try, but not a fan. So. Uh, number 22, I have Love Me Like You. I have Bounce Back. I mean, I don't like any of the singles off of the Get Weird album. And so this is just a continuation of that theme that you'll see. <laughs> uh It's above Black Magic and significantly above Black Magic because I find it more tolerable to listen to, uh, but I still don't like it. With Bounce Back, I it was never really one of my favorites when it came out, and I just I haven't listened to that song in a pretty long time. So I think compared to all the other singles, it's just very low on that um, scale, I guess. Number twenty one, I have Secret Love Song featuring Jason Derulo. I have hair. I don't really like Secret Love Song with or without Jason, and I absolutely do not like Jason on the song. Um, I don't like him on the song, and then I don't like Secret Love Song enough to cancel out the fact that I don't like him on the song. 
and that's all there is to it. <laughs> so with hair, it's it's another one that is just kind of too young for me, so I don't ever listen to it. And Sean Paul being on it doesn't really do anything for me because I don't I'm not a fan of him either. So there's nothing that brings it up in the rankings. Number 20, I have Think About Us. I have Wings. Okay, so I did not rank it as having, as like being with Ty, even though technically the single version is with Ty, simply because they've literally never performed it that way, um, which is the same reason we won't be doing Touch as the version with Kid Ink, even though that's technically the se- the feature version. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, essentially that is that um but e- either way uh, if if i include a tie on it or not on it the song position probably wouldn't change so think about us at 20 i just don't really like the song uh, style's not for me uh, i think it's really repetitive i don't love the like three word chorus all the time um i mean i'm sorry that's a, a four word chorus <laughs> and uh i also just like it just doesn't have like any real meaning behind it and so not for me wings is always such a hard song to place i feel like on these things because i agree yeah it's it's such a staple song and it's it was the first song i ever listened to from them but i don't listen to it because it feels younger and i like the other songs more so i feel like it should be higher just because of like the memories i have tied to it but it's low on my ranking because I just never really listened to it um, because I just I like the other ones better. So I, there's that. <laughs> uh, number 19, I have Holiday. I have Secret Love Song. All right. Um, Holiday is so high because initially the chorus was catchy enough that I didn't mind it. I mean, I never loved it, but I didn't mind it as much. And I actually still like the bridge. Not anywhere near enough to say I like the song. Like, I didn't like Outright Hate. This one when it came out, it's just, it's just in, in, I would never listen to it if I didn't stand Little Mix. Mm. That's a good way to put some of these. Yeah, I think that's how I'm going to start phrasing it. I think that's how I'm going to start talking about it. Yeah, I've never thought about that. But it's so true for, like, a portion of them. Yeah. Okay, so Secret Love Song. I, everybody kind of knows his unpopular opinion by now from me, but I like this version better than the part two version, mainly because it's just faster. I don't really think of Secret Love Song as a ballad um, as much as some of their other ones. And so I like the production of this one more. And I listen to Jason's music sometimes, so I don't mind him being a feature. So this one, I don't listen to all the time, but if it comes on, I don't genuinely skip it. So I guess that's that's going to be how I put it. I don't know. <laughs> that's a hard one to describe, too. All right, number 18, I have a Little Me. I have Salute. All right, a uh, Little Me... I just have never connected with the song the way the the way that the song wants me to connect with it, and I just generally don't like the instrumental, and I do find the song to be really repetitive. I find "Salute" to be a little repetitive to me, um, oh, and I can't. Sure. <laughs> yeah, and I. I don't know if I mean in the sense that like the actual song is repetitive or that I've just heard it so many times <laughs> or both at this point. So as much as I really like that song, I never listen to it because I feel like I just listened to it like the other day. Um, but I like that whole style of the song. So that's kind of like in like the low mid range because of that, I think. Number 17, I have hair. I have only you. Uh, We are resuming the final fourth single of Get Weird that I don't like. And (laughs) um, the reason it is up higher is because I still don't like the song. However, out of all of the 
out of all of the singles off of Get Weird, that one to me has the most mature sound out of all the immature sounds for the singles, if that makes sense at all. Mm-hmm. Um, like instrumentally. Yeah. Uh, and so I prefer it in that sense. Um, and yeah, but I, st- I still don't necessarily like the song. It's just a top out of the uh, Get Weird singles. Um, only you. That one, I kind of have like a love hate relationship with that one. It's like I either really want to listen to it or I don't really care for it. Um, I'm not really hundred percent sure why. I I think it's because I prefer the Apple Music version that they did of it so much more to the studio version, and. I just kind of wish it was that, so I, uh, what's it called? I, uh, there's a word. I'm tired. It. I, I don't like this one as much. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I don't know, because I'm not a huge fan of Cheat Codes' music, but I like some of the other collabs they've done, so I don't know why this one wouldn't be the same. Like, I loved the, the collab that they did with Demi, and this one is pretty similar um production wise so i'm not sure that one's kind of like just in the middle just chilling yeah it really is <laughs> <laughs> all right number 16 i have a word up i have how you doing this one uh is kind of starting this is like kind of like ground zero for me um so ultimately like I don't hate it. I don't love it. Um, I don't primarily associate it with Little Mix. Uh, You know, I knew the song before I knew they covered it. So um, to me, it's just like their version of the song. Um, And so it kind of changes the way I rank it, I guess, a little bit. Because like, it's not their piece of work. And so the only thing I'm really judging it on is like how they covered it, I guess. (laughs) Mm-hmm. which was like fine in my opinion like don't think it was like the best thing ever don't think it was the worst thing ever and that's why you get ground zero with it I, I couldn't even tell you why I put how you doing so low I thought it was a little higher but I guess not um I feel like on the DNA album it's one that I I like pretty high I'm saying this very tentatively because I do not remember where I put it on my ranking mm-hmm. um it's like, it's it's decently high-ish. I'm probably contradicting myself, but it's fine. Um, but compared to singles, I just, I don't like it as much as the singles. That's what's so hard. It's putting some of these songs in with the singles. Like, I like them on the album, and then you put them in with the other singles, and it's like, oh, I, I don't like you as much as I thought I did. Because I think you also start thinking about it as like... Um... Like, you have a different standards for a single than you do for, like, just a song you like off an album. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, like, how good were the performances or, like, or how, like, well do you think the song could perform live or, like, and obviously, like, we're trying not to let that color our impression of it, but, like, it does because that's the whole purpose of a single. Yeah. Uh, I think that's how you do. No, yeah, Definitely. I think with how you do it, it's just, it's repetitive, so that makes me not want to listen to it a lot for the same reasons as, like, Salute and stuff, but I really like Missy, and I like her verse, and so I really like that whole little feature, which brings it up a little bit, but overall, the song does have, like, a younger feel that I'm not a huge fan of, so yeah that, that's kind of I have a love-hate relationship with a lot of these songs because of that <laughs> and it's always the uh, singles I know all right um number 15 I have a reggaeton lento featuring well little mix <laughs> <laughs> I have no time for tears okay so this is not my style of music and I do not really go out of my way to listen to this song. Um, that said, though, um, I do like the vocals on the song. I do like um, like the the like outreach um, to 
other demographics for them in other places in the world you know and it's something it was something different for them and all of that so uh it's one step above neutral (laughs) (laughs) um no time for tears is surprisingly even though it's what is it it's about a little under middle i would say it's actually one of the ones i listen to the most out of all of these um just because it comes up on my music a lot and so I don't skip it I just leave it but I feel like it hasn't been out long enough for me to have like a full-on opinion about it because I tend to not really think about the singles until they've been out for a few years I'm like oh yeah no I don't like this one that much or this one I actually like a lot more than I thought so that one's in like it's still new new phase even though it's not super new Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right, number 14, I have only you. I have Word Up. Uh, Number 14, I like the instrumental and the feature just fine. Um, I just really can't get behind the lyrics, and I really hate that the verses are almost identical. It really annoys me because if I wanted something to be the exact same the entire way through, then I would go listen to, like, a Tilly Tub song. That's really mean. But, like, I just... I don't like that the verses are almost identical. I just like verses are usually my favorite part of the songs and it's because I like storytelling and I like when they're different and I like like having something differentiate the song and instead it's like we're just going to sing you the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. I understand it's a club song, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> also, I don't really like the meaning of the lyrics either. <laughs> All right, personal opinion, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> um Word of, uh, it's kind of what you said. I don't really think of it as like their song because it's just a cover, but I like it. I like the original. I I don't know. I don't have any like strong opinions about that one. I like it. Do right? I listen it's to like, it all it's the like, time? It's neutral, no. like ground zero. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't listen to it all the time, but when it comes on, I'm bopping around. Like I'm not mad it's a single. I'm, I, I'm a big, extremely neutral with that one. I don't know why. <laughs> Number 13, I have No Time for Tears. I have DNA. I know everyone hates No Time for Tears, but um, for me personally, I like the lyrics better than I like Only You. Um, I don't necessarily love like the instrumental or like the vocal arrangement more, and I don't necessarily like the feature itself more, but as far as like what I'd rather like listen to or see performed which of course we've never gotten a performance of it but just saying like it would probably be no time for tears over only you um and also uh the no time for tears chorus really makes me think it's a sample of signed sealed delivered that can't just be me (laughs) i don't know if it is or not but like i swear that is what i hear in the chorus (laughs) (laughs) never thought about that I'm telling you guys, listen to it thinking about like signed, sealed, delivered. You will hear it. (laughs) (laughs) DNA is one that I've actually been listening to a lot recently. I used to not listen to it like all the time, but I definitely have been now. Um, I like the whole dark, rocky ish feel that it has. Um, But I just feel whenever I listen to it, it just feels outdated because it is one of their first singles. So I kind of, I don't feel weird listening to it, but I'm like, I feel like I shouldn't be listening to it because I feel like none of the fans like, like do. I don't know. That's that's just what I feel when I listen to it, but I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> I do listen to it quite often now. All right. Number 12, I have Touch. I have one I've been missing. All right. Uh, touch. Uh, you guys, I'm sure by now know. Uh, if you've listened to any ranking, <laughs> um, uh, that touch is just not for me. Um, I'm just not a big fan of the song. That being said, uh, and I don't like actively go out of my way to listen to it. Um, I would listen to No Time for Tears before I would listen to Touch, probably. But I think Touch is a better pop song and has really nice, pretty vocals and harmonies and Even though it is super repetitive, I feel like um, there's also a couple of change-ups. And yeah, that's pretty much it. 
with one I've been missing. I really like that song and I always forget how much I like it until I listen to it, but I can't play it year round. So it kind of defaults itself to like the middle because I I can't listen to it in the middle of summer. So, <laughs> I mean, you probably could, but I feel weird doing that because it's not Christmas time. So yeah, I that's that's the reason why it's low, but I always forget how much I like it until I listen to it. All right, number 11, shout out to my ex. I have woman like me. Uh, I get to hear the apprehension in your voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. You're going to hate me. Um, okay, so, t- oh, not touch. Shout out to my ex. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, shout out to my ex. For me, like, shout out to my ex gets all of its, like, points from just like its timing its relevance its era um and its sassiness <laughs> um like everything aligned perfectly for shout out to my ex to be what it is um and that's kind of why i always want to rank it higher than maybe i should because because of all those things because it all like like everything lined up perfectly for shout out to my ex to like run and like be the best song it could be mm-hmm. <laughs> does that make any sense like is that just me that feels that way <laughs> no i know what you mean you know like like i feel really uncomfortable having it next to touch because i feel <laughs> like it should be higher <laughs> mm-hmm. but like realistically as far as like what my preferences are it, it's not but like i want it to be a lot higher than touch is yeah so i don't know i feel weird about the fact that it's at 11 uh but ultimately like about the song it's a good pop song like it has nice change-ups i do really like the storytelling that happens in it um i do love the sass of it but you know it's also not it's a song that if i had like heard it um i I mean like i did hear it before i was a stan but like you know I mean, I'll tell you what happened when I heard it before I was a stan. I thought I liked it. I watched the music video. I didn't like it as much as I remembered thinking that I liked it. And then I didn't listen to it again. I didn't hate it. <laughs> I didn't I didn't have an issue with it. But it was not a song that I was like, I got to listen to this, you know? So there you go. Okay. Here's my defense mechanism behind Woman Like Me. Um, I have two reasons. And I'm pretty sure I, I know I for sure said one in the rankings. Um, uh, film five ranking. Also, I should probably put this song and the next song are based going to be the exact same reasoning behind it, and you'll see why <laughs> soon. Um, so with Woman Like Me, there are two reasons why I don't listen to it as much as I I don't want to say probably should, because I actually do really like the song. Um, but I one I over listened to it when it first came out because that was like the first album like release I was a part of as a fan and I was really excited and of course I listened to that song all the freaking time and that's what like that's what I do I find a song I like I play it over and over and then like a couple months later I'm like why did I do that and then it kind of ruins it a little bit for me so I definitely did that to myself um also just doesn't help that they perform it a lot so that kind of made it a little worse uh, I just kept hearing it over and over and then Second thing is that the fandom always says that it's, like, one of the best singles and stuff. And that makes me not think that. <laughs> just because I'm petty. That's nothing against anybody. That's just me not wanting – I don't know. I um, don't share that extreme opinion of yours, and therefore I'm going to make it worse than it is because I don't share that. That's what I do because if you say, oh, I don't like women like me, you get attacked. And so that makes me want to, like, not like it even more. Even though I do like it, that's the problem. <laughs> so I don't know. It's weird. But yeah, I mean, the ones I have above it are obviously above it because I like them more. But this one I really like. And I obviously really liked it when it first came out because I listened to it nonstop. <laughs> so that's that's the end of my tangent. You'll hear it again in a minute for the next song. All right. Uh, number 10, I have DNA. I have touch. <laughs> <laughs> all right um <laughs> so for dna here's the thing is that if they had recorded it during the glory days or the lm5 or the confetti era 
not if it had been on those albums, but like if it had been more recently recorded, I think that I would want to rate this song higher. And I say that based on, I'm sorry, I hit the mic. I say that based <laughs> on, um, based on like the remixes. Cause I like the remixes they do on tour for DNA during the get weird and the glory days era quite a bit. Um, but I don't love the studio version as much as I liked those versions. Um, so for me, it's kind of like, it's a bit outdated. Like also their voices all sound so young and like so different that it makes it really weird to listen to for the studio version. And I mean, obviously I still put it up pretty high because I do like, I will put it on a playlist. I do prefer like that sound, that dark sound from them. Dark mix is the best mix, but like, it's not, I have reservations about it. Okay. <laughs> Touch is the exact same way. <laughs> because it, again, when I became a fan, of course, the Glory Day album was the like most, re- or most recent album to be released. And so I streamed that so much that Touch was one of the songs that I would listen to over and over because it was a single. And, you know, when you're a new fan, that's kind of what you tend to go to. And... Then again, like with the fandom always having this weird stigma with touch and being like, if you don't like it, you have no taste. That made me not want to like it. <laughs> um, but I like the song. It's a good song. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I'm weird. Those are the two, <laughs> two songs I like. I have a problem with them, but I don't actually have a problem with the song. <laughs> I really like them. <laughs> okay, I don't know. End of story. You heard about it already in the other... <laughs> The other rankings. Uh, okay. Uh, number nine. <laughs> I have wings. I can't find my number nine. Hold on. Where is it? I have Reggaeton Lento. <laughs> God. <laughs> okay. Um, here's the thing. I would listen to DNA before I would listen to Wings, but Wings is a has a better lyrical meaning, so it goes first. Um, <laughs> or not first, obviously, because it's not number one, but it goes above. Yeah, I don't know. Wings just feels like kind of outdated to me. It feels very young to me. It's very repetitive. Um, I remember when I first heard Wings, like I really wanted to like it, but there's just like something. I, part of it is how poppy it is, I think. Um, mm-hmm. That I just like, especially like as I get older, like the older I get, the more I'm like, eh. Oh, is that it? <laughs> yeah, I don't I know. Okay. <laughs> I don't, like, I feel like I'm just going to dig my hole if I keep going, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, with Brigitte Lento, I don't really have a specific reason why it's right there. I like it, but I also don't listen to it that much, even though it's kind of high. Um, but every time I listen to it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I like this one a lot. Um, this just shows how, like, little I listen to their singles, honestly. I... Not as in, I don't listen to them at all. Oh, God, now I'm going to dig myself into a hole. <laughs> I, I just prefer the album songs over the majority of the singles. Once you get up, like, a tiny bit higher, then those are the ones I listen to daily. But, yeah, which is making it hard just because I never really think about them because they're singles. So I'm like, yeah, somebody else decides what the singles are going to be. So I've never thought about them. But... Yeah, I don't know. I don't really have a specific reason why it's right there. I listen to it. I like it. It's all good. It's there. <laughs> After everything else got put in, that's where it's slotted. All right. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. That was an easier way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, number eight, I have How You Doing featuring Missy. I have Shout Out to My Ex. So I like How You Doing. I don't love How You Doing. <laughs> um it is a song i prefer live obviously just we're just going off the studio version though um i do like kind of the like i I said this you know in the ranking i like the cheekiness of it um i do think missy adds to it and um but you know it also is super repetitive and um i don't necessarily love all of the instrumental production choices but overall i do like the song and so we're at number eight 
Shout Out to My Ex had a similar thing to some of the other songs where I just listened to it so much and I kind of just got tired of it. So I haven't listened to that song in not counting like obviously performances, but just listening to it on my own. I probably hadn't listened to it for close to six months just because I needed a break from it. But I've been listening to it again somewhat recently and now I'm kind of getting back into liking it a lot more than I did. Um, so that's fun. Because I really do like that song. It was the song, one of the songs that made me become a fan. Like, if, that, if it weren't for that song, I wouldn't have found them again. So I always feel bad that it's low. But I just, I just, I have a problem with over-listening to songs. And that's what happened to that one. But now that I had my little break, I'm listening to it again. It's all good. It's making its way back up. Yeah. <laughs> no. I put it lower than you did. Don't worry. Okay. That's true. <laughs> Moving on to number seven, I have Woman Like Me. I have Think About Us. Woman Like Me. I do enjoy the studio version of the song. I don't love it. <laughs> um, I don't really like Nikki's verse on it. I'm just not really a big fan of rap. I'm honestly not a huge fan of Nikki. I know I've spoken like the worst thing in the world I've betrayed everything but I just don't um (laughs) nothing against it it just not for me um I would have preferred a different bridge personally I do I do like Nikki on the song though for the girls themselves and for the exposure and just because it was one of their dreams um but like as a, a listener I just would have liked something else in the bridge um yeah, so I mean, I like listening to the song. It is catchy. I do really love Lee and Jesse's lower register on it. Um, and I do like the intended meaning behind it, um, especially uh, Lee's lyrics. But also, uh, it's super repetitive and it's like very surface level I don't I won't get into it <laughs> um it follows the theme in LM5 about woman empowerment that I don't really love um I wait that didn't come out right um <laughs> okay one more time <laughs> Uh, um, I have an issue with the woman empowerment theming of LM5 and the way it was done because I feel like a lot of it really was scratch on the surface, obvious, like easily agreed upon things, not that they aren't still problems, but that feminism is very complex and has a lot of different angles and perspectives that could have been written about and taken. And I feel like that was not done in LM5. And I feel the same way about women like me. Yes, the concept of... um you know, take me as I am. I'm not perfect. I don't live up to these kind of arbitrary, like historical, sometimes even like barbaric expectations of women. Um, but that's also like one of the most like generic, like I, I generic doesn't sound like it fits right but it's kind of the only thing I can think of right now it's just like it's like well duh like could you like it's it's very basic feminism that's what I want to hear it's not generic it's very basic feminism and I just would have preferred that LM5 in general but also even woman like me um tackled deeper more complex um facets of feminism and the experience of being a woman and that is my general complaint with lm5 i don't even know if i phrased it that way when we did the lm5 ranking i know i definitely (laughs) complained about it i don't know if i phrased it that way um and yeah so that's just part of my feelings on women like me and i spent way too long talking about it and i'm gonna be done now (laughs) (laughs) the funny thing is with think about us i did not like that song when it came out. When I heard it on LM5, I said, okay, next. Couldn't tell you why. Just wasn't vibing with it. And then I don't know what happened. I think it might have been when they performed it live, maybe. I don't know. They did something, and all of a sudden I really liked it. And now it is one that I listen to, I would say, pretty regularly. Um, It's always one that I'll put in... When I play it, uh, when I play music with my friends, 
I guess when I used to because <laughs> COVID. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, that's just that's kind of a I want to say like a universal song. I know I can play it around whoever I'm with, and I know that they're not going to care that it's Little Mix. All right, number six, I have Move. I have Power. All right, um, Move lyrically is not really that interesting, um, which is disappointing, but I do really like um, how creative the production is. I do enjoy the song. I don't really get tired of listening to Move. Um, I mean, I do not play it on repeat, so I don't test that, (laughs) Um, (laughs) but I typically don't skip it if it comes on, which says a lot because, you know, it's been out since, what, like... 2014 um Mm -hmm. 2013 uh so yeah that's kind of it with power honestly the only reason I have that it's on here is because I just like the ones above it more (laughs) there's literally no reason why it's here like pretty much from here all the way up I like them all pretty evenly ish um yeah, I don't know. It just, by default, and it ended up at number six. Love that song. All right, number five. I have no more sad songs featuring MGK. I have breakup song. <laughs> uh, all right. As you all know, I will take the original version over the feature version every single day, every single moment of every day. Um, <laughs> and if you don't know that, then you are new to the podcast. Welcome. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> and uh yes so uh despite that it is still actually pretty high when you take out all of the other uh like i think if you if i remember correctly it was pretty like in the middle ish uh on the glory days ranking but if you take out all of the album songs <laughs> <laughs> um then it leaves it pretty high apparently <laughs> uh ultimately yeah so uh, while I prefer Jesse's bridge, I don't dislike MGK on the song. Um, I do think like he managed to come on pretty well. I don't think it's the better version of No More Sad Songs, but I'm not upset with it. Um, and I generally like No More Sad Songs. Again, like what makes No More Sad Songs a favorite for me is the bridge. I think it's the heart of the song. If you'd like to listen to me go on and on, and on about that, you can go to Iconic Lyrics or to Glory Days Ranking. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so there's that part of it. That being said, though, I still really love the production and like the vocal arrangements um, and the melody of the chorus and all of that. And I think there's like a nice amount of kind of change ups in the song. And so it's still a pretty high up single. Um, okay. I always feel like weird saying breakup song is one of my favorite singles. Like guilty almost because I know everybody hates this song, but I really like it and I could not for the life of me tell you why. Um, do I think it's one of their best singles? Obviously not. Um, you'll see pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> but do I really like it? Yes. Um, and it's a little weird because, like, I'm not normally a fan of the style of music that it is, but I really like this one. I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Really like it. Listen to it. Uh, I would say daily, but I don't listen to music every single day. But when I do listen to music, more than less, it'll come up and I'll leave it. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> All right. Uh, next for number four, I have Sweet Melody. I have move. <laughs> All right. Um, Sweet Melody. I love the darker sound to it. I love the storytelling aspect of it. Love the lower register in it. Um, not really that many production stuff that I don't like in it. And uh, really like the biggest downside for me is that it's just so repetitive. Like the bridge is literally the chorus. And then after the bridge, <laughs> you do the chorus like five more times. Um, I'm exaggerating a little bit, guys, but like not a lot. And uh, yeah, but like that being said, like I do like the pros outweigh the cons for me with that song. And I do enjoy it. Um, and uh, I would put it on a playlist. So number four. Move you all know I love Move. <laughs> um, I would say it's at number four just because the other three I listen with other people, if that makes sense. I think we've touched on this where there's certain songs that you'll play with other people, but 
like who don't like little mix type of thing mm-hmm. um but move is one that really i'll only play it for if like it's me or somebody that knows them so i think that because that shouldn't weigh into my ranking but it heavily does and so that's kind of how it ended up at number four but honest it's one of my favorite singles so i'm okay with it <laughs> mm. uh number three i have changed your life so do i <laughs> <laughs> i'm so glad we got at least one that matched up i know so far this has been like the most i want to say the most different i feel like this has been maybe. the most difference that we've had since like confetti or something yeah it's so weird okay <laughs> we're so <laughs> used to now like having the same ones i know uh, okay, so uh, Change Your Life. This is a song I had heard before it was a stan a long time ago. I really love the message. I love that it's about them. I love that it captures a moment in time. It does feel a little bit young. It is really repetitive. Um, but I have sentimental attachment to it. Yeah, it's it's one that I've always talked about that it's always one of my favorites. And I think what makes it, this one and number two, I kind of had a hard time deciding on which one, but one, I listened to the other one a little bit more regularly. And this one, at the time, didn't know that this would be the reason, but after you said it earlier, it makes a lot of sense. (laughs) Um, This is probably a song that I wouldn't listen to if it wasn't Little Mix, just because of like the whole meaning and message behind it. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah. Um, My number two is Salute. Mine is No More Sad Songs. Salute, I... It is really repetitive. Um, That said, I have a little bit of a sentimental attachment to it because I have memories of listening to it before I stand Little Mix um, during, like, a dark time in my life. Um, Yeah, I just... I like it. I like that it's empowering. I like the message. I love the bridge. I love that, like, that's a very big change-up, which I really appreciate because the song is so repetitive. Um, it is clearly something I would listen to when I'm not a stan because I did. <laughs> and, um, and I think that it's a, like, I don't know. I just, the dark mix is the best mix. Mm-hmm. Uh, no more sad songs. That one, I've just been really loving it a lot. So I, I mean, it would probably end up still being there if I did this ranking, like in six months. But just right now, I've just been really liking No More Sad Songs for whatever reason. Because I already did really like it, and so it just kind of went up. I don't know. But uh, speaking of him, my friend is a fan of him. Or I don't know if she was, like, a full-on fan, but, like, I, I heard some of his music from her. So I already knew who he was, and I like him, so that really made the song for me too Mm -hmm. even though I like both versions but since this is single that definitely boosted it up just because I like MGK um and I was like just when they do collabs with people that I'm familiar with so yeah (laughs) all right number one everyone say it with me power (laughs) mine's sweet melody (laughs) um I assume that you guys always know what number one is after we've gone through a giant list of which you po- couldn't possibly keep track as we go back and forth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except for in glory days. I did expect you to know what number one was. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah. All right, Power. Um, it's one of my favorite Little Mix songs. Uh, the feature version is my preferred version out of the two. Um, it's one that I loved before I was a stan. Uh, it's one I still love. Um, I don't usually skip it. And yeah. I just love Sweet Melody. I mean, I've said it since the day it came out. Um, don't know exactly where. I think I definitely have said it on here. Um, but I've said it on my channel and on just on my social media. I just, this has always been like my favorite single. Um, will it die down once like more singles come out maybe but I highly doubt it just this one it just sounds so unique I feel like and I just I just really like it I mm-hmm. don't know it's not really much more for me to say about it. it's a single but like I really like it I listen to it like almost I would say 
every time I listen to music, it comes on and I leave it on. So, yeah. All right. So that is our preference for the rankings. Um, Now we're going to kind of just quickly go through um, the second version of the list, which is the like singles and how kind of smart we think the single choice was or how successful or um, or just how like how, well, if it was a good choice for a single maybe that's the best way to put it <laughs> would we have picked it yeah like would do we think it was it was a, a strong choice uh mm-hmm. so uh we're gonna quickly go through those uh and then we'll wrap up but uh number 26 i have one i've been missing again i have changed your life um one i've been missing i just feel like it wasn't really well promoted it probably wasn't the best time for them to be dropping the Christmas single and I feel like it was kind of rushed because they were doing it on tour and overall I just think that if they wanted to do a Christmas song like there was a better scenario to go about it. We Change Your Life, I even though I hate to say it, (laughs) I love that song, I feel like it just doesn't have a good representation of the DNA album. Um, It's just so drastically different and for me, if I listened to that song and was like, oh, let me go find the album, I would be just confused because that's tends to be what I do, um, which is how a lot of my ranking is played out. Oh, yeah, should we also mention that our rankings are based on different things? Oh, yeah, we should. We should mention that. <laughs> forgot about that. Um, okay, so her ranking – I'm sorry, I'm talking for you. Um, her it's ranking fine. is – based on like how well the singles fit the album in the era and mine is yeah. based more on like general success and or potential yeah um sorry we I did just like for me, categories guys yeah I feel like just for me whenever I listen to a single and I want to and I like it and I want to listen to more of their music if it doesn't match whatever music was on that album I get kind of disappointed I'm like oh well that kind of led me on and it was like oh just kidding um so yeah I don't I don't think change your life had a good representation of it and I also just think the message is clearly for them so it if you're not a fan of them you probably wouldn't be as like attracted to the song number 25 I have breakup song I have little me all right um I said it last time I'll say it again I definitely said it in the confetti <laughs> ranking I think <laughs> um <laughs> breakup song is black magic and child of my ex combined in an attempt to regain that success from those two singles and i think it made like a discount knockoff version i know you love it i don't mean to say that in like a like a derogatory way um no it doesn't yeah so um yeah and then also of course because of covid it had horrible <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah. promo and like like rollout and all of that so uh a little me same thing as what the majority of some of these are. It doesn't have as much of a salute feel. Um, also, it's just, it's a slower song. So those singles typically, it's like hit or miss. Um, so yeah. Number 24, I have Holiday. I have no time for tears. Okay, so Holiday, repetitive, um, discount version of Touch, poor layout because of covid even with them being able to make an actual music video um music video concept with song super weird uh yeah uh no time for tears was released at just a bad time because it was right after confetti and it just wasn't really um i don't want to say well thought out but it just didn't do what i think they were expecting and nathan's a smaller smaller artist like it's not gonna really attract much attention to them so yeah yeah i feel like they definitely uh i'm speaking on that one because it's my number 23 (laughs) what's yours oh mine's bounce back no time for I think that it was honestly like released at a really weird time and it was released that way because like that's the time they could fit it into their schedule. And then obviously it was mm-hmm. released at an even weirder time because Jesse was AWOL. Um, and then even 
worse it was during COVID, so they couldn't even promote it if they had wanted to promote it. And then, like you said, he has a smaller artist, and so Little Mix, Little Mix's name was supposed to carry that song, and it just worked out that it wasn't in the cards. Um, with Bounce Back, it was just a really random release, I feel like. Um, I mean, that's kind of how some of these singles are, but it was just really random. I They shouldn't have used a sample because it didn't really work how... I don't want to say work how it should have been, but just the sample is so different from the actual song. And the promotion was really good at first, and then it just kind of fell off. So I'm not sure what would have happened if they would have kept promoting. But, yeah. Yeah, number 22, I have Bounce Back. I have Breakup Song. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that it started off with a lot of potential and really strong with the promo, but for whatever reason, it just, like, suddenly like went away (laughs) um Mm -hmm. I think it was a little bit of a weird choice because it's it's taking a U.S. style of like black music and from like putting it from a UK artist so I'm not really sure why I'm just not really sure why (laughs) um (laughs) Especially when I feel like that's not really what the UK likes. So I think the choice was just a weird one. Um, I didn't really like the, like, I think the rewrite of it took away from some of the, what could have helped it be more of a success. Again, because you removed it from the environment that it was written in and about. And um, yeah, that's kind of it. I feel like Breakup Song doesn't really have a good representation of confetti. Uh, It tried to have like an 80s theme and it really sold that whole just style. And then when you listen to confetti, it just doesn't really match up. Um, Also, it was released during quarantine, so there wasn't any promo. Well, there was, but it wasn't as effective. Yeah. so they probably should have waited to release it because it could have done better. We, we never know. But yeah. Yeah. All right. Number 21. Think about us. I have one I've been missing. Uh, think about us. I think it was a poor choice for a single off LM5 because they really tried to promote LM5 as a woman empowerment album. But then they picked a song that wasn't about that to be the second single. So I think it kind of undermined what they were trying to do and the message they were trying to put out. Uh, I also think that it it's kind of similar to a lot of their other singles. And so um, it's like if it doesn't have a special meaning and it doesn't go with the theme of the album and it doesn't sound different then it's just not really a great choice for a single. Um, and then on top of that, like the, the rollout was kind of butchered um, because of everything that was happening with the label switch and, you know, the music video like didn't come out when it was supposed to and the girls had to come on and be like, yeah, we don't know when it's coming. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much what I'm going to say about what I've been missing is everything that you already said. They didn't have a great promo because it was during tour and there wasn't – actually, there wasn't really any promo – that I can remember um and yeah I don't know in my opinion they should have done it a different year like in between albums just not on tour um because I feel like they could have promoted it better and had the impact that they wanted so yeah I feel like there was no effort put behind trying to make that song a success Mm mm-hmm Especially considering how long they've said they wanted to have a Christmas song. Yeah. I thought they would. there was going to be a lot more promo because they wanted it for such a long time. All right. Number 20, Only You. I have Word Up. Um, only You. Uh, I think it was a fine collab. Um, I don't think it really did much for them. Didn't really go with the theme of LM5, which, you know, obviously it was released before that, but it did end up on the deluxe version of LM5. Um, Yeah, I mean, I don't think it was bad. I think there was a decent rollout. Um, They definitely did, um, you know, they definitely did embrace the song, especially in the later years, and they performed it and and, uh, kind of tried to do a thing with it, but, like, they didn't show up in the music video. and I just think like it didn't really, it didn't go anywhere. 
Yeah. Um, with Word Up, I mean, it's not – one, it's not their song, so that's going to have a different impact, I guess. Um, it was for charity, so there's not really – much about it being pushed to be a super big like success thing and I think since it was a sample they used a song that not many mixers know just because of their age and so they kind of defaulted to being their song even though it's not it's a cover so the song itself is great like I like it but I don't know how smart it was to use a song that their uh, Demo. demographic doesn't know. So that's just kind of my mind, though. Yeah, I mean, my number 19 is Word Up. <laughs> Mine's Holiday. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, what you said, I think it was a bit of a weird choice uh, as far as, like, their demo goes. But that being said, I mean, like, they did do promotion for it. They did perform it in the U.S. Uh, for Neon Lights, and they performed it salute in the uk and so they really embraced it and like went with it um and you know they showed up for the music video and all of that so i think there was like decent promo for it considering what it was um but ultimately like it's not their song and it was just a charity single like one off Mm -hmm. with holiday this one is kind of weird because i feel like they had really good intentions and like a strategy for the u.s market because holiday does sound like the pop songs that we that are really popular over here that we like but promo just wasn't done in the u.s so it didn't really work out and especially because of covid it just really didn't go well because of that and on top of that it doesn't really reflect confetti so that was kind of a problem but like they had good intentions for it (laughs) they really like they really tried to have it happen so once again if covid wasn't a thing would it have made it big over here we'll never know um number 18 i have love me like you i have how you doing um love me like you i feel like it did fit the theme of the album and the era and so in that sense it made like everything cohesive and that was good and obviously it was promoted a shit ton as was all of the get weird era but that being said I feel like it didn't actually help them much in the long run because get weird as an entire era really cemented them in the UK as like an immature kids group um and even though love me like you is not age appropriate for children (laughs) uh (laughs) it has that sound that makes you think it is and so I think that you know ultimately despite the fact that like it had good promo at the time and all of that um it probably wasn't actually that great of a career move with how you doing that one should have been released not at that time (laughs) because a lot of their they should have done somebody who their demographic knows um at the time a good majority of people I mean I'm assuming I wasn't part of the fandom at the time but just from a little bit of math um I feel like a lot of the their demographic didn't really know who Missy Elliott was and if they did they didn't listen to her they weren't as big of a fan so that didn't really help it much in that sense um also the feature version version wasn't promoted as much as the like non-feature version in the U.S. And she has, I think she has a bigger market in the U.S. So I feel like that would have done a little bit better. But I don't know. That's just stuff that I'm thinking. I have no idea if any of this is accurate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, number 17, I have Little Me. I have Only You. Um, Little Me, I feel like, got a decent amount of promo and, um, but I don't think it did, like, exceptionally well or, um, was, like, the catchiest or, like, best song that they could have chosen off of Salute to potentially have, like, a radio hit. Um, however, I do think that it, that it was a good choice for longevity and for the credibility of their career um i think it 
kind of gave them the opportunity to be like, hey, we write. We don't just sing like kid pop songs. Um, And then I also think that it gave them longevity in the sense that uh, they can continue to sing it today and it doesn't sound like they're, you know, 18. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think ultimately it, it, even though it didn't necessarily have like a huge amount of commercial success, I think that it was good, a good choice in other ways. Um, only you, that one. I feel like cheat codes. I mean, I don't exactly know how popular cheat codes is over in the UK, but I know over here they're like pretty well known. Like people know them. They've done collabs with bigger artists, but it wasn't promoted in the US compared to the UK. And so I thought that was just a little strange because if they're trying to break the U.S. market, it should have been promoted in the U.S. because it potentially could have had a bigger impact. That being said, I did hear only you on the radio once, so I don't know. Maybe it was and I just didn't see it. But um, yeah, I don't know. That one is just more of the type of promo it had. I feel like if they had a bigger promo in the U.S., it could have done a lot better. Uh, number 16, I have Change Your Life. I have Move. Basically, my reasoning for Little Me is the same as Change Your Life. Uh, they wrote it, and it gave them the opportunity to get a little bit more credibility to their name, um, you know, early on. Uh, so even though it wasn't, like, the biggest commercial success, and there were probably other songs on the album that could have charted better, uh, I think that, again, it also has longevity. They can still sing it uh, today. Um, and it's not going to sound as outdated as some of the other things on DNA would have. So I personally don't think Move would have been a smart single for Salute because I don't think it sounds as much like the rest of the album. There are certain aspects, but I feel like they should have chosen a song that had more of the general um production that the, a lot of them had especially since this was the first single right uh yeah it was like the lead, lead single. single okay yeah. yeah i don't know i just i think it's a good single but it shouldn't have been the lead single so 15 is hair minds think about us hair um i think that Hair was the most mature sounding off of um, Glory Day, not Glory Day, sorry, off of Get Weird. Uh, As far as like instrumental goes, um, not necessarily lyrics or concept, I guess. Um, But I think like, you know, if you're just hearing it on the radio um, and you're not really listening to the lyrics then you know you it's got a better chance of not being seen as like a kid song um that said if you are listening to the lyrics and it's definitely a disney song just like everything else off of get weird um as far as singles go um but i put it up higher because of the sean paul feature i feel like even though it didn't really do anything for me it was an attempt to expand their audience and catch the attention of uh, people outside of their demographic and so i don't necessarily think it was like the best feature they could have ever had however i appreciate that they were trying to do that yeah kind of what you said about um think about us earlier it doesn't really represent the theme of the LM5 album, so I probably would have chosen a song that matched that. Um, but it's not like the worst choice, but there's definitely a few other ones that I feel like should have been there instead. Um, number 14, I have Move. I have Love Me Like You. Um, for Move... I do agree with you. It was a bad lead single, hence why it's so far down on this list. Um, And I think there are certain elements to move that are, um, that do kind of relate back to the cohesiveness of Confetti, but I do agree it's also a little bit out there in comparison to some of the other songs. Um, That being said, I think that it was very catchy and it was kind of like a good transition song from dna and wings to salute um 
but yeah, I definitely don't think it should have been the lead single. And um, yeah, I think that was just a poor choice. I'm, there's no defense of that. <laughs> um, but that being said, I do think that uh, it did provide an opportunity for them to do that move acapella. And of course, anytime they can uh, turn something into an acapella that shows off like their harmonies and their talent, that's always a win. Like it's not just because like we all like it, but because it gives them credibility with people outside of their demo. Yeah. Um. So Love Me Like You, I feel like compared to the other singles on Get Weird, it wasn't promoted to the extent that the others were. Um, and I feel like it's just, it obviously fit what they were doing at the time. It fit the era, it fit the whole sound that they had, but it's kind of what you said, like the lyrics just were a little bit, I don't want to say mature because it's like a immature song, but it has a more mature meaning and the other ones just didn't. So it probably, it just, that song compared with the other Get Weird songs, just, I feel like they're just on different levels almost, even though they have a similar sound, just meaning wise, it's just a little bit different. Number 13, I have DNA. I have Salute. Uh, DNA, I feel kind of similarly to move about in certain ways. Uh, obviously, DNA wasn't the lead single. Um, and I do think that DNA was more a uh, representative of the DNA album and the sounds that were on the DNA album. Um, but as far as like, like success, I feel like it did pretty well. And again, I feel like it's, it like it remixes very well as they perform it in later years so i think that makes it a pretty good single choice that they can still take a song from 2012 2013 and uh continue to you know sing it in 2017 as grown adults um and it's still it doesn't sound like for kids um and then again it gave them a chance for the acapella which uh, allows them to you know gain some more credibility as artists so for Salute, I feel like that should have been the first single because obviously it matches the rest of the album. Um, and just because it's, you know, same name. Um, but I don't really have anything else. You, Yeah, it was already kind of covered. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> uh, number 12, Reggaeton Lento. I have DNA. Um, I think that... You know, it was just like a one-off and technically they're the feature. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I do think that it got a pretty good amount of success and that it was a good way to kind of reach outside of their UK demo. Um, and I think that Sansio was a good collab choice for what they were trying to do. Um, you just kind of said everything about DNA. So, <laughs> yeah, pretty much all of that um, obviously matched the album. It was very different than like the other what was it at the time like two songs that the general public had heard from them yeah um uh, them to like show a different side to themselves yeah so i feel like that was a smart one it's just low because it just is <laughs> <laughs> i don't know uh number 11 i have no more sad songs featuring mgk i have power all right so i think that there was a attempt at a crossover featuring MGK and I don't necessarily think that it was a terrible attempt because he is more popular over here and it is a completely different demographic. Uh, so there was that outreach attempt. However, it just didn't stick. <laughs> uh, and, but like when we have people react to it, you know, people are like, Oh, they have a song with MGK. Like I have to listen to that. So like it does pique people's interest, but um, it just, it just for whatever reason didn't, didn't hit the way they wanted it to at the time but I do think it's very catchy again I do think that it's gonna have good longevity and so I think it, it was a smart choice in that in those ways so I kind of I put power a lot lower than I remembered um <laughs> but here's my I guess reasoning why so well one it, it matched like the whole glory days feel so that's that's what brings it up but for me, it was the Stormzy feature. So in the UK, like that's great because he's a UK artist, but I feel like he's very limited to only the UK. I could be wrong, but I know he's not well known in the US. And I know that like they were 
focusing a lot in the glory days era on u.s success um and so i feel like having him on a song probably wasn't the best move just because the potential already wasn't going to be there because we don't really know who he is um so that's kind of just what brought it down for me was the fact that he's really only a UK, maybe just that general part of the world artist and that the US doesn't really know who he is. Uh, number 10, I have How You Doing featuring Missy. I have hair. Um, I think that like this had potential if it had just been done at a different point in their career. Um like Missy is very well known she has a lot of credibility to her um and if it had been done at a different time uh, it might have hit a bit more for them especially in the U.S. uh but I think like they were just so early on into their career and it didn't it wasn't actually ever on the album it just didn't you know hit the way the, the way they wanted and they weren't able to really promo it in the U.S. while they were promoting the rest of the album and singles. And so just kind of like a, like a wrong time type of a situation. But I do think that it was a smart collab um, and that it had potential. Mm-hmm. Um, again, with hair, you kind of covered everything that I was um, going to say. <laughs> so, yeah, it matched the whole sound that they had at the time, matched the album. Uh, Sean Paul wasn't like a terrible choice. Would I have picked him? No, but it's it was good. It did what it needed to do. Um, they brought in another audience. And yeah, it just overall matched like what they were doing at the time. Um, next off at number nine, I have Secret Love Song featuring Jason. Me too. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Our first one in this one. I miss when we match up. <laughs> I know. Um, we got so used to it in the rankings. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking Jason Derulo was a smart choice. They did really try to hammer in. He showed up for collabs and all of that. Um, and I do think that Secret Love Song also it has good longevity. Um, and it was kind of like a sleeper hit in the U.S. Kind of. Um, like a lot of people like do covers of it or, you know, like, I mean, you've probably seen in reactions, people are like, oh, I think I know this song, um, or I didn't know this was them. So I think that like it again had potential, but for whatever reason just didn't hit quite the way they wanted it to. Yeah. There's not really anything negative about like the whole, any, well, really anything behind it. Um, I think the only thing that I probably would have done differently, um, is because they did performances with Jason, but every time they did it, they were in the UK. Yeah. So I feel like if they would have done it in the US, it would have hit way harder. Yeah, I feel like there just wasn't really enough promo of it in the US. Yeah, because everybody knows him here. So you're going to see his name and be like, oh, curious. Like, Mm. I'll listen to that. And so I feel like if they would have had at least one performance, it would have probably done a lot better. My number eight is Salute. Mine is Sweet Melody. Um, Salute. I think it was cohesive with the album in the era. I think that uh, it was a the woman empowerment uh, theme was a good way for, again, to try to get more credibility as artists. Um, I think that it has good longevity. They're still going to be able to perform it, you know, later on in their career. And it's not going to sound um, childish or outdated too, uh, too much. And... I also think that it was smart in the sense that it really allowed them to release a song where they could go really all out for performances and start to develop a reputation for for doing really great live performances. Um, Sweet Melody, I I don't know. This one was kind of this one was hard to place. It was a good choice on the album, I feel like, but the impact that it had in I know I keep using the US as an example but it's hard because like we live here (laughs) so um I feel like I don't even know if it was so much as them or the fans that were expecting it to be big in the US and then it just wasn't as much um 
so because of that I kind of put it lower so yeah that one that one was really hard I don't really have too much to say on that one just because I don't I didn't know where to put it at all all right uh number seven I have power featuring Stormzy I have touch um so I do actually think that having the UK artist on it was a good idea um even though they were really trying to break the u.s during that time i think that you don't want to dedicate an entire era to a like different country than the one you're from especially if it's going if you're like if it's your most successful era because you do kind of want to retain that popularity and loyalty in the uk as you try to break other countries and since they were at were in like they were touring America, like while they were doing this, I think that it's just like a a good choice to just kind of keep your foot in the UK while you try to break um, into another genre. I also think Stormzy is super supportive. And I think that um, he was a good choice again to kind of reach out outside of their demo. Um, And it was also very different to the other songs they had released uh, during the glory days era. I feel like with touch that one, I'm not, 100% 100% how it did on the charts in the US mainly because I was not a fan at the time but I feel like everybody seems to just be familiar with that song so it must have done somewhat well regardless of its chart position um I feel like that's one that it'll just kind of be brought up and people will be familiar with it even if they aren't Little Mix fans so for that reason I put it pretty high I guess on here um I just just, for some reason this one just seems to stick with people and people are just familiar with it Mm. so I don't know (laughs) number six I have touch I have no more sad songs yeah I think that touch even though I don't really personally like it um it seems to for whatever reason be very popular even with people who don't necessarily really like pop music and um it did have like an impact in the u.s so they were successful with it in that sense um and it did have like a bit of staying power in the u.s uh and i also think that you know it was a little bit more mature it allowed them to try to start moving into that direction with their music because they were coming out of get weird where it was very much like censored Mm -hmm. um so i do think it really gave them that opportunity to try to establish themselves as grown-ups and women and uh yeah and again it's longevity right i didn't mention it with power either but like both of those have longevity like they're going to be able to keep performing them for years and they're not going to start to feel like um like it's like it's too young for them or anything like that yeah um i really like how no more sad songs has like i don't even know how to describe it It just has a whole glory days feel which i mean the all of their um singles from that era does but whenever i think of glory days i think of no more sad songs for whatever reason and so i feel like that's a good thing and i really like how mgk was on it i think that's good to bring in other audience thing audiences audience things i don't know what that was audiences and yeah it's kind of like what you said they'll see it and be like oh i need to hear this or like, I didn't know that they had a song with him. Um, so I feel like that was just a really good move. Number five, Woman Like Me. I have Black Magic. I think that this was, like, a really strong attempt at the U.S. Uh, in theory. <laughs> um, <laughs> obviously, in practicality, uh, it was rough because of the label change. Um, but I think that it had really strong potential and could have really helped them in the U.S. Um, unfortunately, it just didn't work out that way. Um, but I, I do think that you know it was still a smart choice. It just didn't. It just didn't work out. Yeah, uh, Black Magic definitely matched Get Weird. It was good for their audience at the time. Everything was very similar and all worked really nicely together. Um, Black Magic obviously had a huge impact. Um, the only thing is that it kind of 
stigmatized them. And so now they're seen as being for younger kids and not so much as being more mature and all that. So that was kind of the downfall of that, but it did land them a ton of success. So, yeah. Um, Number four, I have Sweet Melody. I have Wings. Um, So my top four are in position very firstly based off the fact that they went number one in the UK. Um, Because I'm basing mine kind of on uh, this list on like the how smart like the singles were and uh, that type of a a vein of thinking. I mean, if it went number one, then it did something right. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So I think that Sweet Melody was very consistent. Um, I do think that it got a lot of help from Jesse leaving um, as far as like fans really pushing for that number one because it didn't really have staying power, which means that it didn't capture the general public enough to get the number one on kind of that uh that's like mo- on its own yeah I don't really want to say too much like on its own because like it did on its own have a lot of staying power in the charts and like the top part of the charts but I don't mm-hmm. think that without Jesse leaving and the fandom pushing for that that it would have en- ended up number one um I do think it would have had a lot of success. I do think it still would have been successful, like, charting-wise. Um, I just don't think it would have quite made it there by itself. Um, and so that's why it's at the bottom of the number one singles. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, I feel like Wings was, like, pretty perfect for their first single. Obviously not counting, like, the whole Cannonball thing, but... um it matched their audience really well. It matched them. It just it showcased what they were pushing for and what they wanted at the time. And well, it did well. Everybody still knows that song to this day. And yeah, I think just that being their first song was their first song. Their first single was definitely a good move. Uh, let's see. Number three, I have Black Magic. I have Woman Like Me. Um, I know Black Magic might seem like it should really be one or two, um, but I think because of how popular it is and the fact that it's such a streamed video and it's such like a streamed song even to this day, um, and obviously it did very, very well for them, um, not just in the UK, but, but elsewhere. However, I really do think like how immature the sound is and the fact that the music video is like a Disney movie, um, really does not age well (laughs) as they get older. And I think it really Mm -hmm. cemented them because of how well it did as like a more like immature group aimed at children. Um, and I think that kind of hurts like the longevity and the growth and mature that they're trying to do yeah it's like people don't realize that song is from like 2015 (laughs) yeah so woman like me uh pretty much everything you said having nikki on it was a really good idea but it just didn't really work out um again if there was u.s promotion it definitely would have taken off because of how big she is over here um yeah, not really much else to say. Uh, number two, I have Wings. I have Reggaeton and Lento. Um, I think that um, Wings was just a good choice for their first single post X Factor. Obviously, it went number one. It was very popular. It's an inspiring message. Um, they wrote it. Um, And, you know, obviously it also made an impact in, you know, the U.S. and other countries as well, which is always a good thing. Um, And I feel like even to this day, it really is like a staple of the Little Mix brand, especially in the U.K. Um, Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's that's almost a decade later. Um, So I do think that it was a like a strong, smart choice for a single. So with Reggae Lento that one i feel like it's kind of surprising that i have it so high yeah but, um, i was surprised <laughs> were you surprised uh so i'm kind of basing this off of my personal experience 
So I was in Bolivia and for those who don't know, it's a country in South America. I feel like not a lot of people know that, <laughs> but I was visiting family down there and it's really, really big down there. Um, like in the airport, I would constantly hear it. Um, and I, w- I w- was in two different cities, so it was definitely like plaguing in both. Um, and so I feel like that was a really good move because, because they have such a big South American audience and they just don't have opportunity to perform down there. And so I feel like that really, it one strengthened their connection, I feel like, with their fans down there because they're like, like just wait, we know you're there. Like, we're going to do a song with the popular artist down there. And two, it just just worked out really well um it's a song that got popular not just in those countries but like pretty much everywhere I feel like it got pretty popular in a lot of countries so yeah I think CNCO was like the perfect people to I don't want to say collab with because they're the collab (laughs) but they're they were it was perfect for them to collab together because that song was already popular on its own and then with them on it it just made it even bigger and I think like like little mix actually showed up for the clap usually when like they're the feature it's like crickets yeah um but like they actually showed up for the clap they performed it on their own they performed it with cnco they like promote it they showed up for the music video um i feel like they they you know, it was the way they the rollout for that one was was pretty good considering that they were the featured artist. Yeah, I'm also not. I just want to like state I'm not 100 percent sure how reliable my information was. Um, it might be different in different parts of the country or parts of like the continent. Um, but in Sucre, it was very popular. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, number one, shout out to my ex. Woo. <laughs> Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay. So basically, obviously, went number one. um, I think that, again, kind of what I said before in the other ranking, like everything just lined up perfectly for Shout Out to My Ex to be a success. Um, Mm -hmm. It was like, even even in, like, I I hate to bring up Zane. Like, I, like, I don't know, like, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but, like, I go out of my way to, like, avoid him in my videos, on this podcast, whenever I talk about Perry. Like, I just am not here for it. Um, But I do think, like, they did capitalize on that well. Um, And I think that it was an empowering message. I think that it will age well. Um, I think that Uh, they really like pushed it it got them their first brit that was um not like fan voted Mm -hmm. it truly was like a the music insiders and industry acknowledging and their hard work and giving like some i mean this is sad to say but like giving them some credibility as being real artists and I think that like it was a hit in the in the U.S. as well to a certain extent. Um, and I just think like that is also part of the Little Mix brand, the same way that Wings and Black Magic are. Um, I hate that Black Magic is part of the Little Mix brand, but um, <laughs> like I do think like those top three songs are really like just associated with not just like their being their hit songs, but like who they are. Um, and the music they make and the messages they stand for and stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, pretty much what you said. It was just they used the whole Zane situation really smartly and they just kind of ran with it. Yeah. And I Didn't think they try also, to stop any of it. I think they did, they did a nice balance between taking advantage of all the hype that was coming from that, but not um, making it into a thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not creating drama around it. They did it politely. Yeah, there was there was a very nice balance between we're going to use this to hype up song and and get us streams and views and do well. But we're also not going to um, be super shady or like Like rude or disrespectful. Yeah. Um, And like dragon, you know, the new the new girlfriend. And I think they're married now Um, and all of that. So. 
Um, mm. I just think like, again, it was just like everything lined up so perfectly for shout out to my ex to just really rock it out um, and give them just a, a, like some credibility and, um, you know, a new brand that was more mature and uh, another empowering song. And again, they wrote it, which is it's always nice when they get credit for for things that they wrote. Mm -hmm. um yeah so those are our two rankings uh two different lists two different ways to rank them we just thought it'd be interesting to do it both ways uh let us know down in the comments uh what yours are if you disagree with anything we said if you agree um as always please be respectful of us and anyone else in the comment section and we will see you guys next week